Bishop Strickland, thank you for welcoming us to the Diocese of Tyler. As a member of our Board of Directors, you're aware that this year we're celebrating our 20th anniversary of Cross Catholic Outreach. And as we reflect back on the many blessings our ministry has received, one of them is the support of Catholic bishops all over the United States. I was wondering if you could tell us what led you to support the work of Cross and then eventually join our Board of Directors. Well, I just believe you have a, a great mission. And there's a great desire among the, I know the Catholics here in the Diocese of Tyler, and I think throughout the United States, a great generosity and a desire to reach beyond our borders, reach beyond the, the local communities or even the nation, and to really go out and, and offer assistance as we can to, to the world. And there's a real, uh, I think especially in this diocese, but really throughout the country, an appreciation of that's what Catholic means, that it's, it's universal and everyone is part of this family. So that was attractive. I'd known some priests that were involved in the um, cross Catholic, you know, visiting the priests, that the, what the priests do to bring the mission to various congregations around the United States. And then um, I was invited by I think it was Archbishop Rohde at that time was invited me to be a member of the board and I said sure I'd be glad to and really honestly I've learned more about the inner workings and, and the challenges and the the great I guess I didn't realize Cross Catholic was as big as it is until I started serving on the board. You have a new book out called Light in Leaven and in it you write that the whole list of problems on earth they all have one answer, Jesus Christ. And if we want to feed the world, first we feed it with the body of Christ. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I truly believe that we are called to follow Jesus Christ, to be his disciples. That is a message for the world. Sometimes I think we forget that as Catholics. Um, I'm a cradle Catholic, and I think it's easy for us to to sort of look at ourselves as, well, we believe this and this is our way. But really, if we listen to the gospel and listen to the whole history of the church, it, Jesus Christ is a gift to humanity. And so focusing on that, I think organizations like Cross Catholic can really remind us that we all, reaching out to the poor is not sort of an accessory, but it's who we are. It's what we're about because we're reaching out to our neighbor, as Christ says, to our brothers and sisters. In your book, you also talk about the right approach to social justice, that our temporal efforts at helping others can be less effective if we leave God out of the picture. You, you write that when people have a relationship with Jesus, when their hearts are converted, when they're guided by Catholic social teaching, that then those people, those are the people that want to feed the hungry. How does Cross Catholic promote that vision? Well, I think it helps to inform people of what the needs are around the world, of brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, and what those real material needs are. Sometimes very simple, basic needs, water, shelter, clothing, food, just the very basics of, of humanity. So. I believe it really helps people to be more in touch with that and more aware of how their resources, though they may feel limited in what they can do, even what we would consider pretty limited gifts can do tremendous work in, in certain areas of the world. We spoke to Bishop Carl Kimmy recently of the Diocese of Wichita, one of your fellow board members. He said that helping the poor can't just be just a humanitarian thing that we have to help the whole person just beyond the moment, the immediate physical need. And what he said really resonates with what you write, that spiritual development is a necessary part of making a lasting difference in uplifting the poor. How does Cross's model towards long-term community transformation reflect that spiritual approach? Well, I think it, it does reflect that approach, and I really appreciate what Bishop Kimmy said, and it, really is essential that we maintain the Catholicity. And I, I really appreciate that about what Catholic, Cross Catholic does to really be 
Catholic and to really keep those values of the sanctity of life and the, the moral issues that we deal with and in the whole, the, the meaning of family, the meaning of marriage. There are real pressures in the church and in the world to, to compromise some of those things. And I really appreciate that Catholic, Cross Catholic doesn't compromise that and is, it stays with Catholic values. We believe it's the good news that Jesus Christ has shared with us, the fullness of the deposit of faith. So I believe it's essential, and, and that's one thing that I appreciate about what Cross Catholic does and the, the kind of approach is not to sort of back off from the Catholicism, but to share the beauty of the Catholic way and not in any way denigrating any other person or any other group, but instead bringing the richness of life in Jesus Christ fully and vibrantly to others who may have little awareness of really who Jesus Christ is. Pope Paul VI used a phrase when he talked about helping people, helping the whole person, which is integral human development. Bishop, how do you define that phrase? Well, what I would hear in St. Paul VI, what he's saying there is it's the whole person. It's every aspect. It's feeding, but also nurturing the mind, nurturing the spirit, recognizing that we need community, supporting family. So every dimension of, of the human person, I believe, is what um, Pope Paul VI is getting at. As a member of our board, Bishop, you see the reports how the Catholic faithful in the United States, they're empowering Catholic missionaries in some of the, the poorest places in the world. What would you say to our donors who are sacrificing, especially in these challenging times, about the impact they're having in various places around the world? Well, as I said a moment ago, I would encourage the donors to recognize if they have sizable contributions that they are able to make, certainly Cross Catholic needs that, but also the smaller contributions that people may think, what difference can this make? But you know, I love some of the material that you put out that really illustrates that a few dollars can make a huge difference in an individual or in a family's life, in a community. And I think people need to, to be aware of that, that it really does make a difference for their brothers and sisters that may live halfway around the world. Pope Francis has written very beautifully over the years about the poor. In one of his encyclicals, he wrote that every individual Christian and every Christian community is called to be an instrument of God for the liberation and the promotion of the poor. How has Pope Francis's focus on poverty impacted those suffering around the world in a concrete way? Well, I think Pope Francis really has helped people to remember the poor. As I've heard the story he was told by one of the cardinals as he was being elected. Don't forget the poor. And certainly he has lived up to that. And that's a wonderful part of his legacy that he brings to the church of his work. And we live in an age where we need to remember that uh, reality of the poor. Even with all that we're facing now with COVID-19 and everything in the United States, it's still a country of tremendous wealth and tremendous resources. And I think we are all challenged to really ask ourselves, is this a need or just another want? And certainly we live in a, a market economy that promotes us, you, tells us constantly, you want more and more and more. But as Christians, we need to constantly discern and ask ourselves, do I really need that? And challenge ourselves to really be able to certainly take care of ourselves and our families but really remember the, the, the wants far outpace what the, re, the needs really are and to recognize that other people in the world and even in this nation have needs of basic elements of life that should be injustice taken care of. We're just a few weeks away from the start of Lent, a uh, time of uh, preparation and sacrifice. A lot of Catholics have sort of fallen into the habit of maybe giving up something very small every Lent, you know, candy or sweets or something like that. I'm wondering as a bishop, as a teacher of the faith, in these unsettling times, perhaps you have a recommendation of a way people might give up a little more this year to go deeper in their faith and draw closer to Jesus. 
Yeah, and I, I certainly think there is that tendency to, you know, to give up some favorite thing. What I would encourage people, and I challenge myself and, and all of us to really look at, is there an ouch factor, I guess is what I would say. Does it really say, ah, that's tough to, to give up? either to do extra or to, you know, to pull back from something that we really enjoy or that we even really need without doing harm to ourselves. But I think we are challenged in this time especially to, uh, to really ask ourselves what can, can bring that factor of, of really feeling it, of making a sacrifice that makes a real difference in how we live out that day or the next day. Bishop, I want to thank you for your wonderful hospitality today. Thank you for hosting us in the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. And uh, most importantly, on behalf of everybody across Catholic, thank you for serving on our board of directors. Thank you. It's an honor. <laughs>